It's August, and we've got a great selection of single-player PC games coming out, including AAA blockbusters and exciting indie games. Whether you're into giant mechs, musical storytelling, or even getting intimate with bears, there's something coming up that you'll enjoy. The heat outside might be unbearable, but don't worry, we've got some sizzling games that'll keep you glued to your PC and away from the scorching sun. First up, we have the highly anticipated release of Baldur's Gate 3 by Larian Studios. If their marketing is to be believed, it could be the only game you have time to play this month. They've said a normal playthrough will take 75 to 100 hours, and a completionist playthrough could take a whopping 200 plus hours. It's a story-rich, party-based fantasy RPG set in the Dungeons & Dragons universe. It's a follow-up to BioWare's Baldur's Gate games from the late 90s and early 2000s. In this RPG, your choices matter and will greatly impact the characters and storyline. Act 1 of Baldur's Gate 3 released in early access in 2020 to rave reviews, and the game's scope has only expanded over time. The PC release was actually pushed forward by a month to avoid releasing around the same time as Starfield, which makes sense because both are expansive RPG releases that will appeal to the same types of gamers. One thing that Baldur's Gate 3 has that Starfield won't, at least without mods, is the ability to get intimate with a bear. Baldur's Gate 3 releases on August 3rd on both Steam and GOG for $60. Next up is a very unique entry called Stray Gods The Role-Playing Musical. Stray Gods is a character-focused, single-player narrative game that uses singing and music to help tell its story. It's being developed by Summerfall Studios and features writing from the lead writer of Dragon Age, David Gator, and music from Grammy-nominated composer Austin Wintory, who worked on games such as Journey and Flow. You play as Grace, a college dropout and band member who seems directionless in life. You end up becoming a god, but the other gods suspect you murdered somebody to gain your godhood. You have to prove your innocence to the other gods within a week so that they don't execute you. I played a demo of Stray Gods as part of Steam Next Fest in June and enjoyed my time with it enough to include it in my list of top games from the event. The easiest way to picture how Stray Gods plays is to imagine if the old Telltale games were combined with a musical. Stray Gods The Role-Playing Musical is published by Humble Games and will release on Steam and GOG on August 10th. Turbo Overkill is a game that I already included in my top new releases in July video, but the game ended up being delayed due to the developer having a baby and wanting to add more polish to the game. It's hard to fault those reasons for the delay, and I'm still eagerly awaiting the full release, so it's once again on my monthly new game releases list. Turbo Overkill puts you in the shoes of Johnny Turbo, a badass cyborg who has to clean up a cyberpunk city overrun by a rogue AI and its army of cyber-enhanced goons. The game mixes classic boomer shooter action with features like augments, which let you attach chainsaws and rocket launchers to your limbs for extra carnage. One of the coolest things about Turbo Overkill is how you can dash and slide around the map, making your movement fluid and fun. If you have a chainsaw on your leg, you can even slice through enemies while sliding and simultaneously blasting them in the face. There are other upgrades to unlock, like grappling hooks and wall running, to further spice up the gameplay. The game has received overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam during its early access, and you can try it out for yourself with the free demo. I played it and had a blast, so I highly recommend you check it out if you're into this kind of game. Turbo Overkill fully releases on August 11th on both Steam and GOG. It's currently only $20, but is expected to rise to $25 when it releases. Next up is On Guard, a single player sword fighting game featuring silly comedy and many boxes just begging to be kicked into your enemies. You play as a Dahlia, a female swashbuckler who is in pursuit of the dastardly El Vigilante that stole your sword and is totally not your brother Alejandro. This is another game that I played during June's Steam Next Fest, and the demo left me pleasantly surprised. It's just plain and simple fun and has a charming art style and voice acting. It's a very light-hearted game with over-the-top theatrical characters, 
it's not far off from being the Mask of Zorro, the game. Combat is more fun and challenging than I expected, which is good, because you'll end up fighting a lot. You essentially fight one arena, then run to the next one, with some platforming and acrobatics mixed in for a change of pace. This game feels like playing an early 2000s action game to me, but in a good way. On Guard is being developed and published by Fireplace Games and is coming to Steam on August 16th. If you're into stealth and tactical strategy games, you'll want to take a look at Shadow Gambit The Cursed Crew. It's being developed and published by Mimimi Me Games, who previously worked on the very well received Desperados 3 and Shadow Tactics games. Shadow Gambit is a game where you join a ghost ship and assemble a cursed pirate crew. You'll use your crew's unique magical abilities to fight the Inquisition and to find the mysterious treasure of the legendary Captain Mordecai. The game is designed to allow you to fully understand where the guards are and what they can see, which should prevent you from getting annoyed by things that break your stealth but are completely out of your control. There are also time manipulation abilities, which allow you to rewind time to retry actions when your plan fails, further reducing frustration. Shadow Gambit The Cursed Crew releases on Steam, GOG, and the Epic Games Store on August 17th. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is a cel shaded game that is heavily inspired by the iconic classic Jet Set Radio! Instead of only rollerblading, you can also ride a bike or skateboard around the city while performing tricks and tagging things to mark your crew's territory. Red, Trice, and Bell make up the Bomb Rush crew, who are trying to become the top graffiti crew in the city. As you gain territory, you'll discover who cut off Red's original human head, which was replaced with a cyber head. The game features a dynamic, militarized police system, graffiti crew battles, and trick combos that boost your speed. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk slides into Steam on August 18th. Next up is Immortals of Avium, a first-person shooter focused on magic attacks rather than guns. You'll play as Jack as he joins an elite order of battle mages to save a world that's on the edge of abyss. You must uncover the mysteries of Avium's troubled past in order to save its future. You'll utilize three different schools of magic split into 25 plus spells and 80 talents. Immortals of Avium, along with Remnant 2, is one of the first major games using Unreal Engine 5. This game is the first to utilize both the Nanite Geometry and Lumen Lighting systems, where Remnant 2 only used Nanite. Remnant 2 has been well received, but has taken some flack in its performance and reliance on upscaling technologies like DLSS to achieve decent frame rates. It'll be interesting to see if this concerning trend continues when Immortals of Avium releases as Unreal 5 is becoming increasingly standard for upcoming AAA titles. If this game also has performance issues, it could be a harbinger for a very troubled future for PC game performance. Immortals of Avium is $60 on Steam and Epic Games Store and releases on August 21st. For my fellow sci-fi cinematic walking simulator fans, this month brings Fort Solace. It's a story-driven thriller that takes place on Mars. The developers have designed the game to either be binged like a Netflix series or play like an episodic TV show. It features voice acting by Roger Clark, who played Arthur Morgan in Red Dead Redemption 2, Troy Baker, who played Joel in The Last of Us, and Julia Brown, who is new to the video games but has been in a number of TV shows. The game appears to have a very tense atmosphere and a dark tone. You're in a remote mining base called Fort Solus, where the crew has gone missing. Raging storms are preventing your escape from the fort until morning comes. Throughout the night, events begin to spiral out of control while you are trying to solve the mystery and just stay alive. This is another Unreal Engine 5 game, although it's less ambitious than Immortals of Avium. Still, it's worth keeping an eye on performance reviews to see how UE5 can work for smaller games. Fort Solus releases to Steam on August 22nd. Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon by From Software is the other most anticipated release this month. This is the first mainline Armored Core game since all the way back in 2012. 
From Software is mostly known for creating the Souls-like genre, but this is a very different type of game. Armored Core 6 is a mission-based third-person shooter where you play as a very powerful and highly customizable mech. In Souls-like games, you have to pay close attention to overcome even basic enemies, but in Armored Core 6, you are an overpowered mech taking out hordes of enemies easily. There are tougher enemies and bosses that require more attention and skill, however, so it's not all just mowing down entire armies. Hands-on first impressions have come out recently and seem to mostly be positive, but there are some concerns with the bland industrial art direction and uneven mission pacing, length, and quality. It will be interesting to see how it fares when full reviews come out. Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon is coming to Steam on August 24th and costs $60. Sea of Stars is a JRPG that is clearly inspired by Chrono Trigger. Developed and published by Sabotage Studio, this game is on the more challenging end of the spectrum. Be sure to bring plenty of healing items and be ready to use them. As you might expect from a JRPG that is inspired by Chrono Trigger, you don't have random battles, but instead run into monsters that you see in the world that trigger the fights. There are a few extra battle mechanics to spice things up, such as combo attacks and timed hits. Timed hits are one of my personal favorite JRPG features that I first saw in Super Mario RPG, and there was a similar system in Yakuza, like a dragon. With timed hits, you want to press a button at the same time as hitting or getting hit by an enemy to increase damage dealt or reduce damage taken, which adds extra challenge and depth to battles. You can get CF Stars for $35 on Steam or as part of your PC Game Pass subscription on August 29th. Here are a few bonus games that are worth a quick mention that didn't quite make the main list. Atlas Fallen is an action-adventure RPG where you hunt legendary monsters in an expansive desert. It's being made by Deck13, who previously worked on the Souls-like series, The Surge. It comes out on Steam and GOG on August 10th and costs $50. Hammer Watch 2 is a pixel isometric party based ARPG where you battle beasts, hordes of undead, and the forces of evil. The first Hammer Watch released in 2013 and was very well received. It releases on Steam for $25 on August 15th. Blasphemous 2 is the sequel to 2019's 2D Souls like Metrovania Blasphemous. It sounds like the sequel might be leaning more towards the Metrovania side than the Souls-like side, but I'd still expect it to be a difficult game. It releases for $30 on Steam, GOG, and the Epic Games Store on August 24th. August is looking to be a very strong month for single-player PC gaming. Personally, I'm most looking forward to Sea of Stars and Turbo Overkill, but I'm also interested in Baldur's Gate 3, On Guard, Fort Solace, and Stray Gods. What are you planning on picking up this month? Let me know in the comments down below. And hey, if this video has been helpful, please give it a thumbs up to let me know, as it really helps me out. If you're hungry for more single player PC gaming content, consider subscribing. This is Poto Sniper, logging out.